This stone was the key to unlocking a mystery thousands of years old. Cracking its code seemed impossible until one man devoted his entire life to deciphering its cryptic messages. Next, on Ancient Mysteries. The British Museum in London is filled with many remarkable antiquities from ancient Egypt. Among their treasures are 3,000 year old mummies and colossal statues honoring great pharaohs. But there is one item that is more valuable than all the rest. At the entrance to their Egyptian collection is a large stone tablet, one that could be overlooked if not for its conspicuous and prominent position. It's known as the Rosetta Stone, one of the most important treasures of all time. What is the Rosetta Stone? And how did this seemingly insignificant rock forever change our belief in mankind's past? For 2,000 years, the history of ancient Egypt was buried in the sands of time. Travelers and scholars were aware of the existence of these mysterious people, but nothing was known about them. What kind of men built these gigantic pyramids the size of mountains? To what gods did they dedicate their enormous temples the size of cities? And why did they preserve their dead, burying with them treasures beyond belief? Visitors to this ancient world find strange picture writing everywhere. First called hieroglyphs by the Greeks, this mystical language fills the temples, monuments, and tombs. Walls abound with bizarre pictures of animals, human heads, and unknown shapes. Many surround paintings of Egyptians giving offerings to animal-headed gods. Even their dead were buried with this sacred script on their wrappings and coffins. What do these strange carvings say? Did the Egyptians possess black magic medicine and powerful weapons? Would they provide us with answers to the Bible's mysteries? What was needed was a clue, a key to unlock the mystery. Like the rediscovery of ancient Egypt, the finding of an unusual and puzzling tablet would be only the beginning. By the time of Christ, the ancient Egyptians were already legends of a distant past. Greek and Roman historians could only guess at what knowledge this once powerful civilization possessed. As the centuries passed, and Europe had its renaissance, ancient Egypt remained silent, waiting for its own rebirth. It took one of the most powerful men of all time to awaken Egypt from its sleep, a man whose leadership in battle was matched only by his passion for history. During the late 1700s, the French and British were fighting a war for world domination. In 1798, General Napoleon Bonaparte proposed leading the French army on a military invasion of Egypt. If the French could command this crossroads between Europe and Asia, they would control trade and become the most powerful country in the world. By this time, the 29-year-old Napoleon had become a legend in the French army. His victories over Austrian forces in Italy established France and himself as new powers to be reckoned with. Napoleon's sense of history and destiny led him to view Egypt as his next prize. On July 1st, 1798, Napoleon's army sailed into Egypt's port city of Alexandria. In addition to 38,000 soldiers, 167 of France's top scientists and scholars were on board. Rarely have military expeditions had academic interests as well. What was Napoleon's plan? Why was he fascinated with ancient Egypt? Like Alexander the Great, did Napoleon believe his destiny was to annex Egypt on his way towards conquering the world? The egocentric Napoleon viewed Egypt as more than just a cornerstone in his empire. 
He knew of its legends, its power, and its history. This was the land of the pharaohs. These kings were considered gods by their subjects. They ruled over the world's greatest civilization for 2,000 years. Napoleon was determined to learn their secrets. Like Julius Caesar, Napoleon believed he could win the hearts and minds of the Egyptians. Did he believe he was to be their next pharaoh? As a member of the French Institute of Egyptology, Napoleon personally selected the academics who formed his expeditionary force. While the French army swept up the Nile, crushing all opposition, the scholars immediately began their work setting up an institute in Cairo. This became the headquarters for Napoleon's academic expedition. They scattered across Egypt, exploring tombs, climbing monuments, studying, sketching, and painting everything in sight. The wealth of information was unbelievable. Napoleon demanded to be constantly informed. If any answers to their mysteries were uncovered, he wanted to know immediately. While Napoleon's men were busy annexing both Egypt's land and antiquities, England would not stand idly by. Within weeks, the British Navy attacked the French, destroying their ships and laying a two-year-long siege on Napoleon's men. Napoleon himself eventually snuck past the blockade and back to France. His hopes for ruling the world were dashed. As the abandoned French army fought to stay alive, the scientists and scholars were giving birth to modern Egyptology. Racing against their inevitable removal by the British, they stepped up their efforts to copy and analyze as much as possible. The answers to these dormant mysteries had to be found. Ironically, it was neither a scientist nor a scholar, but a soldier who made the most important discovery of all. In mid-July, 1799, as the long siege wore on, the French continued bolstering their defenses. Situated along the Nile as it enters the Mediterranean Sea is a town called Rosetta. In order to rebuild the town's old Arabic fort, men under the command of Lieutenant Pierre Bouchard started to reconstruct the walls. Arabs commonly took material from ancient temples and used them in their own buildings. Unnoticed in these walls, buried since the time of the pharaohs, was a large stone tablet. While the soldiers tore down the fort's walls, the tablet was stumbled upon. Immediately, the soldiers noticed something strange and potentially valuable. Carved on this dusty stone were three types of writing. Greek, a common Egyptian script called demonic, and hieroglyphs. The stone was a kind of magical discovery, and I think it is a piece of extraordinary luck that whoever was there had the perspicacity and the interest to say, gosh, you know, what have we got here? Um, could be important, key <laughs> um, to the hieroglyphs. One can imagine that a less well-informed um, officer might have said, oh, well, no, it's just an old stone, build it into the fort. Um, People have often said, you know, thank God it was a French officer, not a British officer, because, you know, they were perhaps a little more intellectually minded. Dubbed the Rosetta Stone, it measured three feet, nine inches high, and two feet, four inches wide. It weighed nearly 1,500 pounds. French General Jacques Menu ordered it sent to the Institute in Cairo to have the Greek translated. What did it say? Could the Greek be used to translate hieroglyphs? The discovery caused an immediate sensation. The Greek language was understood, so scholars quickly translated the text. It was a decree honoring a Greek pharaoh, Ptolemy V, on his one-year anniversary. In exchange for services rendered by him benefiting Egypt, plaques were to be placed in temples throughout the land. It was known the Greeks had ruled Egypt from 300 BC until the decades before Christ. How did this tablet survive 
for over 1,800 years. Did others exist? The actual wording seemed unimportant until the last line was read. This decree shall be inscribed on a stela of hard stone in sacred and native and Greek characters. All three scripts said the same thing. The news spread quickly back to Europe. This stone offers great interest for the study of hieroglyphic characters. Perhaps it would even give us the key at last. Courrier de l'Egypte, August 1799. The Rosetta Stone would not stay in French hands long. The British siege was soon to tighten, forcing the French to surrender. How did a French general try to hide the stone and prevent the British from taking possession? During negotiations, English military officers demanded the stone. Did they believe the translated hieroglyphs would reveal military secrets? Would this stone be the voice to end ancient Egypt's long silence? <laughs> 